Hi, coming up in this video is Roy. He doesn't do videos regularly and he is asked about his art process from time to time. So here he is talking about a rather special piece of work. I've been asked many times as an artist how it is I work and um, you often see very polished videos where people's desks are all laid out and the paints are all laid out. And I'd like to give you some idea of what practically I do and it varies from image to image, from drawing to drawing, from painting to painting. Um, and so I'd like to go through with you what it is I actually do and, and why. And um, in this case I want to do an image in a, a relatively short period of time. I'm doing it for a, a special purpose, it's for a, a, an art in town, it's kind of a social event. So I'm taking part in this social event where we put art in shop windows, but it's, it's a little bit more sophisticated than the normal run of the mill because we try and advertise this wildly um, and widely and um, we struggled a little bit with that this year with one thing and another. Um, so it's kind of the first um, after lockdown that we've been able to put together the first in two years and I wanted to do something that was kind of a breath of fresh air so work in a different style. So I saw Frank Quietly's work in uh, an exhibition in Glasgow and he's a, an illustrator, cartoonist, um, worked with Neil Gaiman for a bit for doing one of the Sandman series, did a special, he's worked on Superman and, and various other comics um, and, and I was inspired by his, his technique and style, um, Scottish artist and I thought well I can't do the same thing, but I, I'll try and pick up this idea. And because it's not a style I work in, I'm going to be very careful about it. Now, the place where the art is going is, is a big influence over what I'm going to do, how it's going to work, because it's going into a bicycle shop window, and I thought I'd do something special. Normally I'm, I'm quite arty and political, um, but I want to do something a bit more direct and, and lively and free after everything. So um, the first thing I did was to look at the space and then having looked at the space um, I got myself a picture frame. So this is from Wilco's and I'm going to start off working from this picture frame. Look at the size of it and try and work this and I, I'm, I'm working to a target so I'm, I'm not kind of being totally free. I'm setting myself well this is the space I've got to work in and it's got to work for those clients. So, um, because it's a bicycle shop I'm going in, I thought, well, the obvious thing to, to run for next is to something with a cycling theme. And I kind of was in a bit of an Art Nouveau phase and also a uh, German Expressionist sort of period as well. I know they don't quite match, but um, just that sort of period, just before the First World War and just after the Second World War. Um, so I started with a sort of an idea that was almost mucker like um, based on some of the adverts you saw in the 19th century with, you know, like the cigarettes and things. In this case, there's several with bicycles. So I was going to start off with a cyclist, but more in modern garb. So this is kind of how I was going to start out. And I thought, no, I'd do something a bit more lively, a bit more cartoony, a bit more bang, kapow, explosion. And the cyclist coming over the fells in Cumbria, where I live. And you can, you can see there's going to be a female cyclist and she's out sprinting everybody else over the top of these climbs. Um, and maybe she's an all-rounder rather than a sprinter and she's zooming over the top and it's like an explosion of colour, an explosion of life. So these were my two initial sketches, one a little bit more realistic, which I was kind of going off a bit immediately, and then one a little bit more cartoony, and this was sort of the idea I was going to work on. But having got the picture frame and having got the size, I want to see the scale works in the shop window so it's visible to people. So you've got to think about font sizes to give yourself this a, the, a bit of a kick so people from a, a distance can see it. So I, I gave that some thought. And the next thing to do was to sort of sit in front of some Scandi Noir as I was on the TV, get myself on board out and go into the magic markers. Yeah, I'm a bit old fashioned I suppose in that. And was to try and put together some sort of idea for, for how it's going to look. So this is it and um, the, the legs being bent is a bit of a problem for the space of the body, the legs here, but I'm not worried about this. This was literally an old piece of paper and quickly sketched out in front of the TV. And there's my kapow, my explosion. And I think it's going to have some bits around here which I've got some eyes, ideas for. Um, and that's the idea of this. A very dynamic frame. And obviously I'm still a bit drawery, a bit arty. I'm starting to put too much detail in. I want to make it a bit more, a bit more cartoony. So I've got to pull back from that. But I like these two greens. I like this trail going over the back there. I like the, the kind of colour contrast there. Um, I, I like working in magic markers really, it's a bit of fun, I can, you know, rough ideas out very quickly. So, so that was the next stage. 
um, just to give you some idea of the actual scale, and that's something like that would go in the picture frame. So having some idea of the size, the next thing is, I don't know if you can see this on here, but the next thing is to try and work something up actually digitally, because I want to lay it out roughly and, and fairly accurately, because um, I have limited time and I, I work quite quickly digitally, so I, you know, I sketch that out in five minutes roughly. So I could, well, ten minutes, you know, I can rough this out quickly. This frame will be the outer frame inside the, the main border. And then from this, I can get some idea of the colours and how I'm going to work it. Maybe I'll project it the way, say, Roy Lichtenstein did with many of his cartoons. But um, that's kind of where I am at the moment. And then I'll try and rough that up into something bigger and something much more um, reduced. I'm still getting too arty again. I've got to pull back too drawy. Um, so that's my next thing is to get some discipline in my um, over detailedness. So these are the steps that I'm taking. So sketches in the evening, bigger sketch sitting there with, with a board and just some felt pens. Then something's going to get it in proportion so I've got the size for the windows. Sometimes I go straight into it, but if it's not a technique I often use, I'll be a little bit more cautious like I am here. And I kind of know the paper I'm going to use already. Um, I bought myself a big cast art pad of watercolour paper, um, which of course I'm going to use for acrylic. Naturally, why use watercolour? Um, and that's kind of that's kind of where I am in the story so far. Okay, I hope that was a bit interesting, and we'll, I'll take you through a few other steps when when I get to them. Um, time is running round now, and um, I've really got to get this finished and painted one way or another. Mostly today, frame it tomorrow, and then it goes into the shop window. So I haven't got a lot of time to complete this uh, image. I have kind of three choices when going from the computer to the final image. My preferred choice, one I can't really use in the time scale, but my preferred choice would be to project it, um, draw it, and then paint it in. I would have complete freedom to change as and where I like, um, which I suppose I do anyway, but um, it, it means I could enlarge it up and, and work on a larger scale and play with the detail. Choice number two would be, um, instead of printing it out um, and then inking it, would be to um, use a, a technique like has been used by, uh, in this text, by Grant Morrison, Frank Whiteley and Jamie Grant in All Star Superman, something I'd highly recommend actually. Um, and in this case, the drawings were done uh, by Frank and then inked up, I think, digitally and then coloured digitally um, by Jamie Grant and it gives an interesting effect um, <clears throat> and it's a quicker way of doing it um, and um, I did have that opportunity and choice but um, I still wanted to keep, keep the handmade uh, feel to it so I elected to print a very light copy and pay it over tracing really in a way I could have traced it as well of course printed it and traced it and that gives me more freedom I'm really working on a time budget here more than anything else so this is where I've, I've got to with it. Um, some of it is going to look different to the digital image because I left bits out when I printed and changed my mind. Um, I have areas of uncertainty, so the décolletage is an uncertain area for me. And the reason is that I was going to try and play a joke on the kind of the zip busting open as well. She's um, blown them all away, but I feel like that's too much and I, I don't particularly want to make this into a naughty cartoon. I have done those occasionally in the past a few times, so I think I'll steer away from that, so I'm going to make it a bit more just um, strength and power um, and kapow, you know. So um, that's probably where I'm going to go with that, but I left it a little bit free for me to be able to draw um, at the time. I've got to ink this in. I've got to be careful not to put in too much detail because it's something I will drop into very easily. And I've got decisions to make over the cogs and things. Do I, do I actually use gold or bronze or whatever? Should I give the impression of, 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 of that or should I actually go straight for the material? And one of the great things you can do when you're doing a one-off image like this rather than printing for a book is, is that of course I can make these gold and I can embellish them that way. So I'm tempted, I'm very tempted to go down that route as well. And so the next step is to take this inked version and um, add the colour. Okay, so I'm going to paint this very much ad hoc. Um, by that I mean I'm kind of not going to worry too much about really the colours and the 
details of how I'm going to pre-mix it to sort of get the colours together. I'm going to kind of use these acrylic inks, really a bit like watercolour. I want to give the heroine of our story um, a bit of a, like, almost like a halo. So I'm going to go kind of round her lighter. Um, mixing a sort of cerulean blue live just making a judgment call um, on the amount of light color I'm going to to mix in to kind of give that halo effect and then I'm going to work down with darker colors um, the darker blue for the sky now obviously I could do this so much easier digitally. Um, I can't help wondering at this point, I am not. But nonetheless, patience is a virtue. I, I don't know if I did this right, but I, I'm just trying to give it an explosive feel and, and just do it live and I'm just slinging on some white on top of the blue, uh, cerulean blue as it sets. and. Um, you know, I could probably blend this in if I had time, but I kind of like it raw. I'm going to leave it a bit raw, so let's see if that works. So about halfway through now, and I'm kind of making decisions on the fly. The colours are being done on the fly. I think I'm going to leave the white as quite a strong colour in there. I was thinking of doing something with the cogs, but time's not permitting. And also, I kind of like them white. It's kind of strong and picks out against the background. So we're getting to this point now, to the to the point of making decisions about the, the fells in the background and um, her outfit. Um, and I think I know what I'm going to do there. So we'll, we'll see as it rolls on. Okay, so we're on the afternoon before the show. Uh, I haven't put the mount in. Lucy's going to do the mounting for me. Um, but it's finished. So there we go. Um, it, there's some compromises for sure, but... Uh, and working wet in wet isn't the way I, I, I probably want to work. I probably want to layer it, but wet in wet it is because that's how I've had to work for the time scale. So next next uh, stop is the shop. Go. So uh, here we are in Cockermouth now. This is part of the Neander's uh, Trail. Um, immediately get a fly on it in front of it, and this is uh, this is the picture in situ, and uh, this is the bicycle shop behind. Um, and so there we are. It's done.